एवरीवन सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रेस्पिरेशन टुडे वेल इन रेस्पिरेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन सो व्हाट यू कैन सी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू नाउ इज अ लिटिल कॉम्प्लेक्स इजंट इट वेल बाय ट्रस्ट मी स्टूडेंट्स बाय द एंड ऑफ द लेक्चर यू विल डेफिनेटली फील दैट दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम is not really that hard as it seems uh before we begin with electron transport chain let us have a quick overview of what we have already studied so in cellular respiration as you know this is the equation of respiration we have a molecule of glucose and oxygen and when they combine we have carbon dioxide being released we have water molecules being released and we have energy formed in this process and as you well know this energy is released in the form of molecules called as atp right so can i have the full form of atp quickly adenosine triphosphate very good all right so coming to the steps in respiration as you remember the first is partial oxidation that is when glucose which is a six carbon atom molecule and it is converted into pyruvic acid which is uh, which is a three carbon atom molecule right so do you remember which is this process what was the name of this process glycolysis very good so in glycolysis the end products are two pyruvic acids right so the fate of these pyruvic acids can be they can either go undergo you know lactic acid fermentation they can undergo alcoholic fermentation or aerobic fer fermentation depending upon the organism in which the respiration is going on and this step that is glycolysis it happens in the cytosol that is to say the cytoplasm the next what happens in respiration is especially in aerobic respiration which we are studying right now is that these pyruvic acids are completely converted into carbon dioxide right so this c which went into pyruvic acid has further become carbon dioxide moreover the second step that is happening is the electron transport chain where the water molecules are going to be synthesized and we are finally going to get our atps right so again a question for you do you remember which is the name given to this step where pyruvic acid is converted into co2 well indeed you are right it is krebs cycle in fact not only krebs cycle it is also known as the tca cycle so we have studied this part and let us come now to the electron transport chain so i have for you a visualization which will help us understand this electron transport chain in a more easy way manner all right so what you see in front of you is the inner membrane area of the mitochondria so we have a lot of participating molecules in the system and let us look at them we have uh, nadh dehydrogenase we have cytochrome bc1 we have cytochrome oxidase we have two mobile carriers ubiquinone as well as cyto uh, cytochrome c and uh, these electrons and protons along with them nadh which is, which is an electron donor we have molecular oxygen which will be giving us water adp and inorganic phosphate which will be giving us uh, the atp right so to begin with nadh which is a electron donor carries two electrons to nadh dehydrogenase right and in this process as you can also see two protons are being transferred from the matrix region towards the intermembrane space this electron transport chain is basically a sequence of different redox reactions in which we have a electron donor giving electrons to a electron acceptor all right in the second step this electron acceptor becomes the electron donor to the next more electronegative molecule which becomes the electron acceptor in that case all right and interesting thing is that this particular reaction where electrons are donated they it is a energy releasing reaction and what happens that this energy which is released it is coupled with the movement of protons which are literally pumped by using this energy from the matrix region to the intermembrane space all right 
So what happens? Uh, the next step is that our ubiquinone, which is a mobile carrier, that is to say, it can easily move in the intermembrane. All right. It will carry these electrons and transfer it to cytochrome B C one. Now here again, electrons will further be transported to another electronegative molecule that is uh, cytochrome oxidase. But in this process, protons again will be pumped from the matrix region towards the intermembrane space. Now in cytochrome oxidase. This is the place where water is formed, and for that to happen, we need four electrons. So two cycles of electrons donation, and then it combines with protons as well as molecular oxygen to give us finally the water molecules. Now, as you have noticed, that in this step also protons are being transferred towards the intermembrane space. So see what happens, you know. Because of this continuous transfer of protons at each step of electron transport chain, there is a gradient formed in the inner membrane space. That is to say, a lot of protons have been collected there, and there is an imbalance between the number of protons on both the sides of the inner mem inner membrane. Right. So what happens? The protons which are having a higher potential in the inner membrane region. they want to come back towards the matrix region and they can do that with the help of atp synthase molecule so this atp synthase molecule you know you can compare it with a motor just like you know in dams what happens in dams we have a lot of collected water in one place and there when we open the gates the potential energy of that collected water when it rushes down through the turbines it starts to move the turbines right so what happens in this case also when we when we uh, you know when we make the protons move through the atp synthase these protons they start to rotate the atp as you can see here the part protruding inside the matrix region of the atp synthase molecule that is like a turbine it is like a motor it starts to rotate and when it starts to rotate this adp and inorganic phosphate they are present just arranged you know very near to these blades of this turbine all right we could say a molecular turbine in this case right so since they are present there and when it starts to move they literally get compressed because of that movement because of which the adp and pi they join together to give us the atp molecule as you can also see in the animation so every time these protons are being pumped back we have atp being released so this is what you know happens in the electron transport chain that first of all electrons are transported from one molecule to the second molecule second molecule to the third molecule and at each time this energy released in this reaction is taken for pumping protons from the matrix region towards the intermembrane space and after that that gradient that is formed when it moves the protons back toward the matrix region we get formation of atp molecules all right